What's up, YouTube? It's your boy. We're right back with another video. How y'all doing today? Y'all would not believe this. Your boy Tommy G came to Louisville. I know it says Kentucky, but everybody that's from Louisville, we don't say that we from Kentucky. We say that we are from Louisville. Louisville, Louisville. We're not from Kentucky. But if you're from Lexington, you're from Kentucky, though. <laughs> if you're from Lexington, you're from Kentucky. But look, though, y'all. This is where I am from. So just seeing this right now, it makes me feel so good. And this lets me know that he really comes to dangerous places. He Sometimes I be thinking, like, when I be watching his videos, like, man, it ain't nothing going on out there for real. But for him to come here, I know, I, I, yeah, I ain't going to lie to you, man. I don't know why you keep doing it, playing with your life like that. But shit, you made it out alive, and, and I get to react to it. So hats off to you, player. But... Let's get right into this video, man. Let's go. We we're on our way to H block. We just got word someone just got shot and killed right there. This happen every day. Shootings happen almost every day. Ain't no almost every day. Every day, nigga. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tommy G. Today we're in the trenches of Kentucky. H block Duke, man. Cut though. OBHB. Y'all know how we rockin', man. Big dogs gotta eat. Big I just woke up to a ten play. Nigga acting like you on the block. I'm on the Kim Bay. It's only Tuesday. Bet your ass be there by Wednesday. I'm in Denver in December like I'm Philip Lindsay. Y'all on Twitter acting bitter, but still bought my mixtape. Apple fritter with a vacuum sealer on the e way. On this channel, we often take a deep dive into the underworld and sketchy situations. In today's episode, we head to the most dangerous and murderous city yeah. in Kentucky, Louisville. With four straight years of triple-digit homicides, reckless behavior, and gun violence is an everyday issue. Hold on, all jokes aside, y'all. With four straight years... Do y'all see these murder rate numbers? Over 150 people died four years in a row, man. That is not a good thing. Hey, man. One thing about everybody from this city that's from here, we trying to get the hell up out of here, y'all. That's exactly why I'm doing this video right now. I'm ready to go. Even though I done left before and came back, but I'm ready to go, man. The triple digit homicides, reckless behavior, and gun violence is an everyday issue here. To explore the challenges facing Louisville, we meet up with an old friend of the channel, H Block Dude. We met him back in September of 2022, and unfortunately, YouTube age-restricted that episode because we had a discussion about a particular shamanic vegetable. In that 2022 visit, we were surrounded by guns, we had a near drive-by shooting situation, we did some push-ups, and we also had a lot of fun. What? A couple unfortunate things have happened since the last time we visited Duke and Louisville. Some of the friends we met two years ago, Cha-Cha and Slow Bucks, were not able to be in today's episode because they are now both incarcerated for a few years each. But more on that later. Folks, tragic violence does occur in this episode, so viewer discretion is advised. Join us now as we meet up with H Block Duke and he takes us through the trenches of Westside Louisville. This shit is not a game, bro. Get your clear this is not a game, yo. Yuck, man. Missing teeth forever. We're back in the beautiful city of Louisville, Kentucky. We're gonna go through the absolute trenches here. This is a city that's seen a big increase in gun violence, and we're meeting up with a friend we met two years ago, H Block Duke. This is H Block Duke. We're making it happen. What up, big dog? Yeah, we live right How you doing, YouTube man? Studio. It's the best studio in the city. I'm gonna bring my guys nothing but the best top dollar. Last time we met up with H Block Duke, our video got age restricted because we talked about magic vegetables, shall we just say? But we're gonna do this again. We're gonna see what we've learned in the last two years, how life has changed. But without further ado, folks, H Block Duke. Hey, what's up? Up? How, how you doing? doing? How you doing, man? man? You know, we back. We back in Louisville, Kentucky. H block, man. Y'all know how we do. Is this H block right now? Nah, it's Boys Town Road. See, this is the good part of Louisville. You can come in like, you know, politics. It's a lot of restaurants, bars. This is like the part of the city where you can come have a good time and don't really have to worry about too much. Is this where you take your lady on a date? Yeah, yeah I take my lady on a date. You got a girlfriend? Yeah, I got a girlfriend. Yeah? How long you been dating her? Since like third grade. Like that long. So you know it's been Dang. a rough experience. You know it's been a lot of ups and downs. You gonna pop the question or what? Gotta get myself together. Yeah. It ain't her, it's me. And this is my guy right here. What's Stay up, Tom Hall. What's up, man? What's up? Nicest cameraman in the city. Did you ever get scared filming a music video? In the beginning when I first started doing it, yeah, a little bit, but you kind of adapt to it. Have you ever had to sprint during a music video shoot? Yeah, a couple months ago. What happened? Let's say some bullets were fired. The only reason I knew they was being fired at us is because there was like this metal container behind us, but we was in a pitch black abandoned building and I heard the bullets hitting the wall behind me. Do you think it was targeted at the rapper doing the video? 
video or was it a random shooting? I think it was targeted. That's frightening. Yeah. But have you ever had that with me? <laughs> no. We don't want nobody getting injured or hurt or nothing on our watch. Because, you know, that falls back on us. For the music video, do you ever check to make sure that the weapon is empty when they're oh, yeah. doing I'll, all this to you? I don't really care if they put guns in the video. I always say keep one out the head and fingers off the trigger at all the time when you hang with the camera. Like, whenever I first started doing it, it was a little scary having guns. Like, especially, like, when there's multiple of them getting aimed at you at the same time. It's like, oh, God. And then I feel like you got to be professional also. When I'm getting to it in my career, I don't want any more guns. Like, people know we have guns. Kentucky's open, Curry State, so you better have a gun. When you go and visit the kids, what do you talk about? I tell them my story. I tell them where I come from. And what y'all hear me say in my music, it's not for y'all to take and live. It's for y'all to understand that. I don't want y'all to go through the same thing. I want y'all to learn from me. Like, but most times as I see as growing up, sometimes you have to learn the hard way. Like it's glitz and glamour, you know, the girls wanna suck your dick, you on, you know, get a little, little popular, a little fame, <laughs> but you know, police is on you more. So you can't move how you used to move. It can't you just go to Walmart with your kids. It's just different. That's gotta be stressful. Yeah. When I go do these schools, when I talk at these schools, most songs they know is the most disrespectful songs. And I know I make way better music than that. So I think that's a good point though, because it seems like right now in rap, it seems like the best way to blow up is the more violent you are, the more crazy you are, the more airplay the song's gonna get. Do you ever struggle with that? Because it's like, I want to blow up, but also I want to have a good message for the kids. That's yeah. the main struggle. Reality with entertainment. It's mm -hmm. consequences for the stuff that people's portraying to be at reality. All this beef and all this drilling, all this sliding, like somebody has to pay for this. And then I got guys that I'm not willing to sacrifice. I don't have pawns on my team. Like everybody, I want to be big, better. So I may need them one day. I don't want to just be the person everyone has to go to. So as a leader, you feel like it's your responsibility to protect your team and not put them in bad position. Yeah. You took us to a place. Where are we right now? Man, we at Next Level, man. One of the hardest shops in the city. Come okay. on, come tap in. One thing I will say is, your boy, you can tell that he really got a good head on his shoulders, man. He really got a good... He's going places. I, I, and I like how he talk about don't mix entertainment with reality. I swear I'd be saying that so much, especially when it comes to music, because it's so hard to separate the two. I, I love how he go, he's going to talk to the kids and all of that, man. I I love it, man. I love it. People, people look at you... A lot of people look at us, especially as black people, they just automatically think something bad, especially if if you in the streets or whatever. But the whole time, man, you just never know how a person really is. You know, growing growing up here is different, man. It's different. A lot of people don't a lot of people don't end up like people like me, you know what I'm saying? I'm round with a pipe, don't stop the lights, you know we coming. I go blame, control the paint, Andre Drummond. Don't got no favorite rapper, I looked up to my big cousin. Man, I take just one look at you, I know you season your chicken well. I do. <laughs> I, I got the season in my You got to. He got the As do you. We got to look around and pick a nice fit out. We're going to put that shit on, shoot a video. I'm going to show you how to do it in Louisville, Kentucky. So what do you look for when you're looking for a good a get up? You got to go feet first. Unless you find something like so crazy, like, and you can just go up some white forces or something like that, you feel me? Huh? I see you grab the off black cop shirt shirt. Yeah. Why that shirt? Just because I was just finding something. You like shirt? I don't sip cop shirt. Okay. Because a lot of rappers do. <laughs> I've met rappers that are smart normally, but after cop shirt are damn near retarded. But I like the rap rap, so if I get off cop shirt, I'm gonna sound like Top you know, and screwed. way different. I, I done been off drink before and tried it. I just don't produce well off of it. It doesn't help you in the studio. No. Nah. Kids back home might see people drinking cough syrup or brands like this and think cough syrup is cool. Unless you like making your IQ half of what it is, I'd recommend not to use it. This is next level shit. So to me, spending money is difficult. I'm a frugal person by nature. So like, mm -hmm. especially when I see like a $140 t-shirt, I'm like, oh. Like, this isn't gonna be good. Like, I almost have to leave the store, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Is it hard for you to spend money on stuff like this? Nah, cause I'm spending it on my craft. This is for my look, this is my costume. Say if you was an actor and you need mm -hmm. a Batman costume, mm -hmm. a Batman costume, 300, good job. Investment at the end of the day. True. Like, cause true. rappers do have to uphold a certain image. Like, do you think a rapper can blow up nowadays with Walmart fit? It depends on what you're talking about. Have you ever done a real job? Yeah. What was your job? Uh, I did construction. Like, you know, like Dick's, somebody ordered a basketball ring from Dick's. Like, we'll come dig a hole, pour the concrete, you know, set the anchor yeah. got a cure for two two days then come and put the basketball ring up whatever really i can do i'm gonna do it like i ain't no type of person that's just gonna be broke like i know a lot yeah. of people in days don't want to make no money like if your pocket is flat empty bro get a job people get like too proud to do certain shit like i made my first amount of dough doing lawnmowing i'll go door to door knock oh, on my yeah. neighbor's doors mm -hmm. 
All jokes aside, niggas in the city is broke these days, man. Man, I was living in Wisconsin and I was selling, I was selling clothes and shoes, no problem. I'm talking about I was making, I was making a great amount of money. I come back to Louisville, man. Niggas is broke. Niggas is trying to negotiate lower prices, a hundred dollars off. Like, come on, man. If you got $50 in your pocket, why are you shopping for a $200 t-shirt? Talking about some 60s all I got. And you don't even got that. On the line, we whack, hopped on my boy Sin. Gonna get this together, this is the next level shop. 1512 Bardstown Road. We're open 12 to eight every day except Mondays. Y'all come check us out. If you bring your switch here, you get 20% off. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What the? I said somebody just got killed by H block, so police is all 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 over. Do you know who got killed? Nah. <laughs> it wasn't none of my people. <laughs> like it's just just literally happened though. This is hot in that area. Should we drive past you think? H block is a sketchy <laughs> Place, we were eight minutes from the notorious spot locals refer to as H Block, a place that the last time we were there, guns were upped in a drive by shooting scare when we learned that nearby, a young man had just been gunned down in broad daylight. The fact that someone was willing to both kill a teenager and do it across the street from an elementary school just as kids were getting out of school speaks to a sad combination of recklessness and disregard for life. Chantavion okay. Bullet was shot and killed on 28th they Street okay. and Garland Avenue around 4 p.m. This incident kept us from visiting H Block, so we instead drove to Block to tap him with Duke's posse. Here's what happened. We were on our way to H Block and we just got word someone just got shot and killed right there. One of the things we keep thinking about on this channel is what could be done in a city to reduce gun violence because there are all these young men that die every single year that could have been a contributor, that could have been something, that could have been someone to the community could have been proud of. And we have men that are getting into these cycles and the question is how do you break a cycle? I think it starts with economics. I get really upset. I see the government, they send money overseas all the time. We just had a $90 billion bill, go to different wars around the world. How much money would it take to put a manufacturing plant in Louisville, Owsley County, Kentucky, the poorest county in America? Because to me, once you give people solid economic ground, I think a lot of people gravitate towards that. We're three minutes from H block. We're gonna make a quick stop. In in my opinion, man, well, first to start off, the gun violence everywhere is a problem, man. And one of the solutions that I got that we need to start being in these kids' lives at a younger age, man, because in public schools and stuff like when I was going to school, it's like if I didn't want to do something for myself. I didn't have nobody pulling me towards success. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't, I'm not doing anything that I saw around me growing up. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I started playing sports and stuff, I had to go through my own awakening. So, man, we just, we need to find a way to start being in these kids' lives at a younger age to where they not growing up in the streets. Because you only grow up in the streets when there, there's nothing else to go to. You know what I'm saying? Stop and come right back to O Block. I, I can uh, show y'all exactly where it's at. Just FaceTime me. Okay, sounds good. Some of the most dangerous places we've ever been are like the little pockets in a safe state. And South Dakota at Pine Ridge was super dangerous. In Des Moines, Iowa, that was super dangerous. Safe South state, Dakota? Dangerous area. Last time we came here, it was scary. And now next time we come here, someone dies. This shit happened every day. Shootings happen almost every day? Ain't no almost, every day. Like every day. Two, three times a day. So we're pulling up to O Block of Kentucky. Last time we were here, there was a lot of people with guns. But if you actually look at the homes, 
this is the nicest project I've ever been to from the house appearance. I'm not saying crime doesn't happen. I'm not saying it's not hot here. And then we just came from H block where you saw a lot of boards on the windows, crackheads. And to me, housing projects like this are encouraging because this is decent living. Well, hey, Kim, oh, it's my next order's coming up right here. Okay. okay. About the street up, he just got to get stay out of the way, stay out of jail and shit. He's be on boy, he's a little slow, but he's fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I need to be a little off, but they're a little right. You feel so me? when we were here two years ago, you guys were locked up. Yes, sir. Yeah. How yeah. old are you? I'm 19. Mm -hmm. You were locked up as a 17-year-old? It's the gala. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, he got good manners, though. I respect it. I respect it. Yeah, I was I got locked up when I was 16. I had got an assault charge. What started the fight? Nah, I shot somebody. Uh, I ain't fight nobody. <laughs> it happened, <laughs> where it happened. It happened at Obla? Yes, sir. Uh, oh, over in the park. <laughs> we were both in the little boot camp. Yeah. The scene too. Like a juvenile school? Yeah. yeah. And what'd fight. you learn? And I'm sorry to cut it off, but this is just what I was talking about. About not everybody be bad people, though. He shot a nigga, but he's respectful. While you're at the juvenile school. Don't Earth go thing. back. Like little, little Did they get you in any sports or anything? Yeah, we, played we played basketball. basketball. We went fishing and shit like that too. Do you like fishing? Hell yeah. I, I see you doing oh, push-up okay. last time. Let's get it. How many should we go for? I hey. can't do 20 straight. Oh, let's do 10. <laughs> 10 a, nah, we're going to do 11. You can't do 20? Dang. Big dog got to eat. Man, big dog got to eat. Let's talk about something saying. serious, OK? As we were trying to go to H Block, we found out some really bad news. Damn, what happened? Louisville yeah, police, yeah. like literally, if you summon me to court, I will testify that this man was innocent. I was with him the entire time. What is that like hearing that call? I ain't gonna lie, it's, it's kind of frantic. Like, I don't want nobody losing their child. Any mother losing their child, like, you know, it hurts. When you come from where I'm coming from, you keep seeing all these kids down here and there. You wish you could just be the voice of reason. Yeah. Like, man, fuck that shit. Let, let's get some money. Let's uplift the city. Does that ever get depressing to hear that same story over and over and over again? Yeah. Yeah. Cause it, get, it gets to a point to where we like crabs in a bucket. Like now, I'm one, I'm one of the hottest artists in the city. Like everybody wants to tag along. Everybody want to diss me. I'm getting dissed from people I don't even know. It's just a whole lot of people that thinks that that's the way to diss people. To be like, the best way, like if you are going to be in the streets, get your money and stay out the way. Like beefing stops the money. Like it's been so many times I don't have deals and opportunities and what I got going on and what I'm presenting myself as, a lot of people think that investing in me is like a liability. And they don't want to invest in me and the two million dollars in me and I'm out here living like this and you feel me so mm. that's why we doing this and showing them the difference of the city why are so many people wanting to get into beef when i was growing up it was about the drug dealers was about who got the money now it's about who killed the most people so the shooter mm. the shooter is more praised than the boss than the big dog why is it that someone from here can't become a plumber or a real estate agent or run a fast food restaurant be the manager at a mcdonald's i feel like a lot of people can because at my ninth grade year, I went to a private school and I got to see the difference of people's livelihood. Like when I grew up, I seen my uncle selling drugs, my mama selling drugs, my daddy selling drugs, and they all took care of the family. If I grew up, I had a doctor uncle, uh, my mom's a lawyer, my dad's this, it would probably make me want to go that route because I see that it's possible and tangible to take care of the family. So that basically that highlights the importance of a role model. Yeah, it kind of gives you the satisfaction of when your granny's late on her rent and you can see your mother pay the rent and you know how she's paying, he's like, and if it ever comes to that time, I want to be that person of the family. I want to be the person to call on. Two friends that we met last time, Cha Cha and Slow Bucks, mm -hmm. where are they? They are federal, one's in West Virginia, they're both in federal prison, and they're both in West Virginia at two different locations. Ty will be home in like the next two years, Slow will be home in the next four or five years. We just holding it down for them and keeping this shit going. They were supposed to call in today, but Cha, somebody got stabbed in his jail and they put them on lockdown, he can't call. And then Slow Buck said they got the same thing going on in his jail, he can't call. And that's where people got to understand how people lose in touch with their family when they go to these federal facilities. Like, this stuff happens to where you can't talk to your family for three months. And like, you know, once you're out of sight, you're out of mind. So you got to kind of keep them energized and keep them alive and mm -hmm. they like, you feel me? So that, that, you know, that's been a weighing a lot on me. They were cool guys. We had a really great time last time we met them. What are they serving time for and how much time are they serving? Slow Bucks got 10 years and he's going to do, they have the new first Offenders Act, if it's non-violent, you get to do 60%. They've been in there about a year, so he's looking at another like four years, something like and that. And what are they, what are they accusing him of, or what are they booking for? They, they accused him of conspiracy, you know, controlled substance with some drugs, something he had nothing to do with. But when you're in our position, they can paint a picture of you. As long as they can paint the picture, it doesn't matter if it's the real Mona Lisa so, or not. So, what is Cha-Cha waiting for? Cha-Cha, <laughs> he's away, man. We and him was together, we was riding one day. <clears throat> 
And you know, just profiling as usual. We got got pulled over. You know, he's a man of his word. You know, stuck with, you know, stuck to the code and you know, took his charges. You know, a little gun charge. You know, a little nothing major. Trying to protect himself in a city full of violence. It's hard to, you know, not do that. Cha Cha is he's a white boy. White he's boy. relatively small. How is he doing in prison? I ain't gonna lie. You gonna do in prison the same way you do in the streets. If you're a stand-up man in the streets, you're gonna be a stand-up man in prison. Remember last time we thought a drive-by was about to happen? Mm -hmm. People started clutching? Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. That was frightening. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, it was a different time. Like, I've been more calm and things. They don't try to make You were more peace. heavy in the rap beats at that time. Yeah, I'm trying more to make peace now, you know, like. You want to introduce us to some of the crew? Yep, I'm about to uh, change in my fit, and then we'll be right back. Okay, cool. Chino Morton. Our clothing brand. Mm -hmm. Is that a person or that just a cool sounding brand? Cool sounding brand. Okay. And then got in God we trust. You know, we always believe in God. You're a religious like we, man? Yeah, got to. If you don't believe in God, you got some type of God. You're a God, my God, whoever's God. As long as you believe in a high power, you got to. You got to believe in God, though. He's right. He's not lying. If you don't believe in God, I don't know. I mean, you might. You might still become something, man. But I mean, I'm praying for you. In the two years since we've been here, what's changed in life, what's new, what's different? I don't even know. This is a question I want to ask, which is, um, we've been looking at the stats in Louisville. Triple digit homicides the last four years in a row. How young were you when you- Why ain't nobody t t told, checked him on how he's saying Louisville? It's not Louisville. Why ain't nobody saying nothing to him? Heard your first shooting or saw your first shooting? I was like in elementary. I don't sure. remember. I was in. I don't know the jacket. I was in elementary though. I was at a funeral and I was I was probably like like ten. They just got shot up and I just started running. Do you know what happened? Like what the story behind it was? No, I don't know. I just it was just shooting. I don't know. I was, like, it was like a little argument. Yeah, a lot of shit. You don't even know it. Just be shit going on. What part of Louisville is the most hot? Yeah, I heard the West End. The West End. Okay. Yeah. It seems nice though, like it looks yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it's got that re- that's got that be a project. They took out a project, project. project. they them. But it was what, bad there. It's one of the nicest looking projects I think I've seen. Yeah, yeah. It used to be real. Yeah, it's not, it's, like, it's, it's used to be a project. It, they rebuilt it all back up. Like a lot of people that live there now, a lot of their family members live there when they was young. In this neighborhood right here, my family goes back 30 years. Man. As it got nicer, did it get safer? No, no. <laughs> yeah. no. Really? And how new is this? Yeah. Oh, they built it like back 10 like, years old? Yeah, they built like early 2000s. Yeah. Like, yeah. This is where we feel the safest at. Yeah, I really feel yeah. safe. Yeah. This is safer than if you go to the summer? Yeah, Sef yeah. yeah. safer than that. Why is that? I don't know. It is. We just been here our whole life. That's where we been. Cause then when you live in the suburbs, you gotta worry about certain shit, other shit, motherfucker looking at you early and shit. Cause you never heard you just be yourself and you safe. You got an opiate crisis, sir. It's bad. It's fat now, creeping in the city. Yes. Yeah, it's all safe. Creeping, creeping, bad hurt. Been bad hurt though. How in the city? Yes. Creeping, creeping. You got an opiate crisis. Sue's Kroger fulfilling daily opioid crisis. What? Is it just a racist drug overdose and death? Been bad, her though. How long has Fat been in Louisville? You think? I was in high school. I've been in high school for damn near ten years. Like rocking the city, though. Like like 2013. That's when it got worse. What should be done with the homeless people? Like, if you were mayor, where do you put them? Where do they go? How do you let them live? Yeah, yeah. it's a lot of bad and bills. I'll take Bro, some They should get in like programs to help themselves first. Give them yeah, they got they got people that want that shit for themselves too, though. When you see money going overseas, like we just sent 90 billion overseas to wars, not in our country, and yet we have big crises in our own city, what does that make you think? Joe Biden. They made, they didn't make me the president. <laughs> <laughs> I need that. So let's go back to the homicide. He like did say so. Record years, four years in a row. What does it make you think about the future of the city? And what does it make you think about gun violence? I just not How many funerals have you guys been to people that have gotten Killed by gun violence. I was just, yeah, all my friends got, everybody I know that I lost got killed. I've been to two. I lost I've my been, daddy to gun violence, so it's been in my, in my whole life. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the H word? What you mean? Punky. Oh, shit. <laughs> H block, I give you the H pass. 
Oh, you my honky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's like you said nigga. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> and speaking of H Pass, we're launching a revolutionary new product. Ah, isn't it beautiful? If you'd like the first bite of the apple of getting this, join the email list at TommyGMcGee.com. Anywhere That's in the country up. now, you have the card. All right, there's been so some shit going in. I'm Kyle Tommy G. With great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> yeah. So what you, so can we give you the pass? What if I just say it in my head right now? That's say it. Okay. <laughs> what are some of your pet peeves, things that bother you, things that really grind your gears a little bit? Somebody telling me something that they not gonna do. Mm. Like, I ain't gotta be on my time, it ain't gotta be perfect timing, but as long as you say you gonna do it, come through and do it, you gotta stand on your word. Do you experience a lot of people not living up to their word or not being reliable? Yeah, and that's why I be around the same people. Like, every time you come visit me, we tap in, you gonna see the same new people. We ain't doing no recruiting, looking for nobody. Like, we ain't, we built on family, it's just organic. Let's go back to H Block one more time. How, when will you go back there? I ain't gonna lie, I go back really whenever I can. Like, you feel me? You not live there anymore? No, hell no. Like, but I still go back there and visit family and reminisce, you know, old times. What you made know? you leave? But it's just really like when you got a face like mine, anywhere I can go, I'm gonna go subway, they're gonna know me. Pro, anywhere I go, they're gonna know me. So, with the life I live, I kind of gotta protect myself from everything, all the obstacles I got. From police to ops to anything, I gotta be on extra, extra point than everybody else because I'm a known face. Did that get exhausting? You constantly have to think about where you're going and who might be there and. Nah, because it's what I chose. When you what you sign up for, it's like you know you get a job description. They all it's, it's a twelve hour shift. You know, it's gonna be boxes, heavy lifting, and you get enough. You're like, man, I ain't want to lift nothing. Else. <laughs> this is what you signed up for. You seen the job description? Yeah. You know what's going on. H Block, thank you for welcome. Yeah, it's, it's a good analogy. I fuck with that. Come on, back to Louisville. Thank you for keeping us safe. You know how we gonna uh, keep you safe, man. I got a little. A little light little oh, dog shit for you. I have a dog that shits and it doesn't look like that. Yeah, just, you know, just a light little five. It ain't nothing, you feel me now, you know. What's your hope for the future, dude? My hope for the future is that the youth can understand, learn from my lessons, and aspire to be something greater than what we've been. And my hope for me is to take this shit all the way to the top, really to be able to put my guys in position who do clothes, who, who, who do car detailing, who, who do boxing, all my guys I can take in and the fame I get and the notoriety I get spread it throughout my city so we can grow. I said my nigga in the jails, he has hell, he officer boxing. Yeah. I'm a rapper just like Wayne, been in the streets, I'm steady mobbing. Chose the streets of f***ing school, I'd rather spend it, go to college. Bye. My little bitch is CNA, she slide Perkins in her pocket. Woo. Slide down the lane with something big and ugly, then it's rhyming. What? These niggas lame, don't let them f*** you out like Mr. Crocker. Yeah. My bitch keep acting up, I add another to my roster. Yeah. Dreadhead, playing with that chop like he a roster. Yeah. 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 There's perhaps no better alternative to the street life than combat sports. So we had to a boxing gym to talk to a professional boxer that grew up with H Block Duke. Here's what he had to say. What's going on? Nice to meet you, man. How you doing? My nigga man. Big C right there, man. When it comes to boxing, man. The great Muhammad Ali from Louisville, Kentucky, bro. Don't don't ever forget that shit. Like we do that shit too. We got them guns, but we'll put them hands on you. <laughs> right now in rap, you hear a lot of people that rap about, oh, we don't fight it out no more, we just shoot. Mm -hmm. To me, I think that's cowardly. Yeah. I feel like we need to go back to an old school fight. Mm -hmm. There's a lot less consequence. Like if I have a fight with someone, I get a bloody lip, he might get a... I'm gonna tell you how black fights go. Yeah. It'll be a one-on-one, -on -one, then somebody start losing, then somebody jumps in, then somebody gets shot. Why? I don't know. Where's the honor in I, that? I don't, I don't think people know how to control their emotions and anger. Okay. And I think it all started with the video camera. Once somebody can have you get knocked out for life, like, you know, back in the day, not, oh yeah, I think he got knocked out. I heard he got knocked out. Nah, it's on my phone. Look, he just uh, got knocked out. And so for as long as you live there, people, oh, you're the guy that got the fuck. It's the embarrassment part. I know a lot of people that done died behind fire. Like, well, so they something, won a fight and then died. They won a fight and died. That's crazy. I try to stay out of any altercation. I don't yeah. want to fight. We're not in jail, we're not in court. Okay, that's <laughs> But any other way, I'm straight. Plus, most things aren't worth fighting about. When everything said and done wasn't worth Hey, that is a fact. Oh, no altercations. I ain't trying to cause no problems. He's he's really breaking down exactly what happens. As soon as somebody starts losing the fight, they immediately become emotional. You know what I'm saying? Immediately. Worth the risk. Facts. They tell me slow down because I'm living too fast. Facts. Even if I change, might get hunted by my past. Facts. Don't focus on my money. Try and put it in the stash. 
So what got you into boxing? So it was a guy in here. He actually passed away. His name was Troy. My friend was boxing. I wanted to go to the gym with him, but I never did. But what made me like really pursue it is I saw them fighting in the restroom. They both boxed here. One of them, like it was, it was crazy. He hit him hard, right? Rattled him, knocked him in the restroom. And I was like, damn, I was trying to figure out how to do that. You know, I was trying to figure out. Yeah. I pay attention to shit. So I'm wondering like, how the hell did he hit him that hard? It was crazy. He was way bigger than him. So I came into this gym and uh, real for real, what got me stuck into it was catching up. So my first few years, I'm getting touched, getting touched, getting touched. Yeah. So I'm like, shit, I lost. I can't quit now. That's the thing about any good martial art. The first few years, the time you show up to the gym, you're going to get beat down. You're going to yeah. get tapped. Yeah, that's the only way to get better. But once you survive that and emerge, then it's like, okay, now you're the one putting on people. And exactly. How long have you been boxing for? 10 years. This will be 11 years this year. What has boxing brought into your life? It brought me a lot of like peace, mind control, like uh, temper wise. Like whatever you're going through, man, you can come in here and, and leave it all in here. Frustration, mad sadness. You can come in here and hit whatever you want to leave, you know, all your problems are gone. So it's more like therapy. Yeah, I always say the gym is my church. Yeah. Every time I leave that parking lot, I'm driving home, I'm relaxed. Someone yeah. cuts me off in traffic, I don't give a shit. I just feel good, you know? Yeah. What do you think boxing can bring to the youth? It'll give them a strong mental. You know, it'll keep them something to work towards every day, every day. Cause just something that small right there, you got to do a lot of, takes a lot of focus. And just that way he's doing so. Coming in here, we'll build a strong mentality for a kid, for a young kid. Mm -hmm. H Block, what's kept you from joining this gym? I ain't gonna lie, what kept me from joining this gym? <laughs> like, cause like, I be knocking niggas out. Like, oh, yeah. you hear my aggression, I'm already like it. So if I got any nicer, like, I ain't gonna lie. Like, I probably just go straight in the bar every night, knock somebody up. Yeah. It's also fucking shit. Kind of crazy, the better you get and the more dangerous you get at fighting, the less you actually fight. Yeah. Because yeah. you gotta walk away from fights. Because you know what you can do. Because you have responsibility not to hurt someone. Yep. That's the balance. But like you said, like, we growing up the same area, you know. Look, I'm probably the only one that like took this route out of everybody. You know? Why do you think more of your friends didn't join you? I didn't really promote this because I was losing. So my first two years, I didn't want anybody to know that I was boxing because mm -hmm. uh, I ran for questions like, what's your record? And all shit like that. But now it's up. It is what it is. My answer is, is he's been a leader. Like ever since he was young, elementary school, middle school, he has never been a follower. He always did him. Like you could tell when a person's gonna have their own path and, and be their own man and, and stand on what they wanna stand on. And that's why we like we on the hang every day because we do two totally different things, have two different paths, but we have the same type of vision and drive. And once you see somebody that you came from yay high with though, doing this, you gotta respect it. Because a lot of people, especially Facts. growing up at a young age, they're tempted to go to the street route. Do you think boxing is something that can take them out of the streets and put them on a good path? Facts. Yeah. I come from the same environment, same mentality. I just gotta use it in here. You yeah. see the street anyway when he knocks somebody out. Yeah. <laughs> it, co it comes out of him, but he knows how to conduct himself. He's a professional. Um, what does boxing bring to the youth? It gives him a place to go yeah. after. This nigga's intelligent. He's intelligent. Cool. Most of the kids that I deal with, I work with the kids that most people don't want to work with. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It gives them an outlet, it gets them off the street, gets them healthy, and it gives them something to work towards. This guy came to me, he was eight years old, he was this tall. Okay, he's 12 years old now. He's gonna be the number one fighter in the country by the end of the year. Wow. You know what I mean? He's like, he's like my son. I mean, I love this guy. He loves me back. I mean, I was adopted, so therefore, went out in life. I was pretty successful. I uh, wanted to come back and give back. My son started boxing, started training him in a garage. From that garage, he became a youth WBC world champion and through that John Hill went to school with him and I started uh, a lot of single parents a lot of these guys had single parent homes started in my garage working with a lot of these young men they became national champions and we just grew them I mean look at the facility now man. it's beautiful we work with uh, the police athletic league I mean I got a lot of cops that are friends you know when I was younger of course, I grew up in a neighborhood too where it seemed like they were only there for bad things. So I think getting an understanding, a lot of these guys just get up and go to work just like us now. There's bad people everywhere you go. Of course. Good and bad. And I know, unfortunately, a lot more good than, than bad. Yeah. So when you come here and you work, you show up every day, there's rewards on it. Combat sports, especially for boys that grow up with a dad in the household, it yeah. gives them purpose, it gives them confidence, and a coach can be, and a mentor can kind of replace a father. A little bit. Absolutely. When my pop passed away in high school, I had a, a room full of coaches I could go and I knew that they had my back. That meant a lot to me. It helped with my healing process. Absolutely. Give yourself a purpose. I mean, when you come to Louisville TKO, top notch boxing, it's family. We're going to work hard and we're, you're going to win. It's going to give you a place to go after school and we're going to be your second family.
been building champions since 2005, 2006. I'm glad that there's men like you walking this earth, so thank you for what you do. Thanks for stopping by, yes, brother. It was a pleasure meeting you. Yeah. Thank you, man. Have a good day, okay? So, folks, combat sports is really big to me. And that's why I started the Milwaukee Wrestling Academy, 6333 West Douglas Avenue. We have a state-of-the-art facility for kids in Milwaukee to come train. You want to contribute towards the mission. We're paying coaches, fundraising for the kids, shoes, scholarships, all of that. The link is in my description. Hit the GoFundMe. I appreciate it very much. Thank you for the support. All right, folks, thanks for joining me on this episode. We'll see you next week. Peace. Yeah, I really, really, I, I love this video. I really did. This was, this was nice. You can tell there's some people out here that's potentially trying to make some change, make some change in the world and the communities. And I, I just love to see it. I love to see it. You see how, like right now, he just showed the rest and they're doing a lot of stuff for the youth. Like they, everybody uh, seeing was talking about the youth. Everybody just, they trying to target the youth. And that's a good thing. The youth are the future. And we the future too. But hey, I love y'all so much. I'ma catch y'all on the next one. It was nice seeing y'all. Come to Louisville whenever y'all get the chance. You'll love it.